What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome in to another edition of MVP Sports Live right here on either twitch.tv or YouTube. I'm joined as I always am with my beautiful co-host Dave Elster. Hey everybody. Dave, how you doing today? It's a beautiful hump day, beautiful Wednesday. Doing good, doing good. Feeling very non-argumentative today. <laughs> We're going to see how long that lasts. As, uh, I may have pre, well, even before the pre-show on Twitch, I may have grinded Dave's gears a little bit with uh, talking about undefeated football teams. And yeah, put the respect on the undefeated Bears from the 30s and 40s, Dave. I mean, 11-0, 13-0, still respectable. Uh, don't care if they couldn't throw a uh, forward pass because it was illegal, Dave. But yeah, undefeated... Uh, Sports teams got Dave a little. So Dave's doing the woo saws, the woo saws over there in his home mm-hmm. studio. But uh, it's a complete basketball show, Dave, today. No football. Uh, there's a football game going on. Logo. Um, that is it's what over. is it? Did it officially finish? Steelers win 1913 or 1914. They stay undefeated then. Uh, go yeah. to 11 and 0. Um, Steelers, yet again, not, not a super convincing win. No, they uh, they barely eat that one out against a team missing about 14 players. Uh, mm-hmm. Their starting quarterback and then their second quarterback got uh, taken out of the game at the end. Yeah. Like, like at it, this Steelers team sure plays. De- I mean, they were in the red zone <laughs> like five times and came away with nothing. So it's it's tough. It, all, it really is. And also, Mad Rogue says the sarcasm is reeking off of you. Dave. I can't not <laughs> it's see. That's what I can't turn off. What the can't sarcasm? Off, okay. Just the yeah. sarcasm and the spite. Two things that Dave can't turn it's, off. That's like eighty percent of who I am. <laughs> Dave's like I'd, I'd be dead then at that point. But yeah, all yeah. basketball today. Talking NBA. Talking um, college basketball as well. Before we get into everything, though, make sure to uh, check us out on Twitch. We're li- I'm doing them out of order today. Uh, check us out on Twitch. We're live every Monday through Friday. Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. We're also on YouTube at MVP Sports, so you're catching on to everything that we do. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids is the way to go. Link down below or exclamation Patreon into Twitch chat gets you that link. Thank you to Pat Hill and Philly Sean, our Patreon sponsors. And then if you're not in the greatest community on the internet, actually greatest community community on the planet Earth, join the MVP what? Discord. Uh Go ahead, Dave. Say, do we have any lockers at like NASA who could be astronauts maybe, or, or the Russian equivalent or are, SpaceX? Are we the greatest discord at the uh, International Space Station? Maybe. I would maybe, like to think so. maybe I make that claim. May, like, I mean, it's been four years of people making claims that uh, don't seem to have facts. So fuck it. I'll make that claim. We're the greatest, not even in the world, not even on planet Earth, but International Space Station. Fuck it. We're the best discord on Mars, Dave. That's how fucking far reaching we are. That link down below in the Discord or exclamation Discord and Twitch gets you that link. But Dave, we have a jam-packed show. And uh, the first bit of news, NBA, it's straight NBA to start the show. Dave, I didn't expect this to happen today. I did not expect this to roll across our timeline. But uh, LeBron James signed an extension. Out of everything we've talked about, this player going here, the Atlanta Hawks making moves, the Pistons signing all these players that will they work out? Probably not. But if they don't fuck it, we're trying to tank anyway. So that's the Pistons motto. Uh, yep. But LeBron decided, Hey, I'm going to sign a two year extension. So now LeBron James signs that extension next year's contract is it's his player op year, which was at the end of last year. That is no longer a player op. That is next year is a contract. Uh, he gets the contract. Then the year after he is now a free agent in 2023 Instead of 2021, the interesting note is that lines up with his son, Bronny, which he will become a free agent the same year that, yes, the NBA has to get rid of the one and done rule. Um, but if they do that, like we think they would, um, we don't then know yet. if they do, Bronny and LeBron could basically, he could sign wherever Bronny goes. And that's what people are thinking that uh, Bronny and LeBron will play together at some point but dave the thing i want to hit first is uh with lebron james this does this completely fuck up next year's free agent uh season or does it make it a little bit more spicy because 2021 was supposed to be uh the the free agency year of free agency years led by lebron well i don't think it screws anything up but i do think it is very telling that 
LeBron James was willing to lock down his contract long term. Mm-hmm. This is long term for him. Um, and it means he might know something about other players in the league and what their willingness is to switch around teams at the end of the season. And maybe if Giannis not moving is a, is a guarantee at this point. So mm-hmm. he's like, well, I don't need to worry about waiting until that happens. And then the Lakers can sign me after the fact, because we're not going to land someone who's going to put us in that contract situation to go over the cap. So I will sign my couple year extension Anthony Davis, we expect to sign a one and one now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can still get that max deal. But it does kind of, for me, that's that's my take, is I think that he understands or he's looped in with people and Giannis is staying up there in Milwaukee. And uh, that, that was kind of like the, well, you might as well lock down your money while you can, just in case, just mm-hmm. in case. Yeah, I mean, the Giannis thing is interesting because I still... Even if he signs the contract, I'm not for sure like saying that he's a buck for life. There could be a thing where he, after the season, says, no, trade me. I want to fucking right. say I want to trade. But at the same time, Laker-wise, would they be able to... like? We're talking they don't even have the assets now to trade for somebody um, with some of the players that people wanted them to try to go get. Would they have enough assets to make the money work for a uh, Giannis deal... Right now, the free agents, if you look at it, LeBron was on the list. He's now off of it. But, like, Chris Paul has a play. Like, the guys who have player ops, Chris Paul, Kawhi Leonard, Blake Griffin, and um, Paul George. And then after that, it's, like, Mike Connolly, Kyle Lowry, Paul Millsap, DeMar DeRozan, Otto Porter Jr., Rudy Gobert's on that. Giannis right now is, but if he signs a long-year deal, he'd be taking off of it. Part of me looks into this where, first off, to answer a question Eric has in Twitch chat, he says, so it is basically a Kobe deal to finish his career. No, I don't think, I think this is something where the first side of it is LeBron's not finishing his career with the Lakers. The first side of it is, Hey, I'm lining this up because I think like you said that he might know something. He may know that the one and done rule is going to be gone. Like he may have, some inklings where it's like, we are going to get rid of that. Like we're pushing for that as a player's union. The NBA is going to want to do that. Chris Paul, still the president of the player's union. I think so. Uh, Well, that would, yeah, I I think it's very heavy for the player's union. So if they do believe that, you know, when it's time to re up, I think the re up year is 2023 or 2024 Mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Chris Paul is still the, Chris Paul still is the, uh, is the president of the player's union. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, kind of in his back pocket, mm-hmm. something to consider. But I, I just had to double check. I'm like, I don't know what year the, the current deal is through, if it's through 2023 or 2024. I'm, try- I'm trying to look that up right now. So okay. this was back in October of this year. It says, uh, for the third time since May, the NBA, this is from ESPN, the NBA and National Basketball Players Association are extending a negotiating window that preserves each side's rights to terminate the collective bargaining agreement uh, due to the pandemic. The NBA and NBA PA agreed um, on a new October 30th deadline to complete ongoing discussions. Um, that is obviously passed. Um, but yeah, that's the last thing I see from yeah. ESPN on it. So um, for me though, LeBron, like you said, he may know something either free agent side or that side, but it's also on to me interesting of like, I feel like is a LeBron looking or would this even be able to work Dave because of contracts? Like you said, the whole thing of Anthony Davis, why he hasn't signed yet is a, he wants to wait until the Giannis thing is done. That has come out. He wants to kind of see there's a part of like, how much is Giannis getting before I get mine? But also there's a part of let us make our moves before re-signing you because we can re-sign you and go over the cap. Like, does this mean that, Basically, it's like no one's going to come to us. Or is it basically a, you know what? I can stay here. I can re-sign this. Our money can be locked. They don't have to worry about re-signing me. And we could still get a Chris Paul if Chris Paul wants to play with his buddy LeBron. If, to me, the intriguing one, basically, if what's going to go on with another team in L.A., we're going to talk about them after this. Let's say fucking Kawhi is not happy in one L.A. team wants to go over to the other locker room. Like 
could LeBron know something of like, hey, if I resign, that could help us get someone next year. They could come to us. We can win championships from now until my contract is up. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, I, you know, my initial thought was all on Giannis, but I do think that there's a chance Kawhi or Paul George, you know, with them both being able to opt out of their contract at the end of next, uh, at the end of this year, technically mm-hmm. now. I, we are starting the 2020 yeah. 2021 season. Um, I think that either one of those guys could hop over uh, locker rooms to become a Laker, and they technically only need one of either Anthony Davis or LeBron James mm-hmm. up for an option at that point to go over the cap. So, I mean, as long as Anthony Davis signs a one and one, uh, I think they're pretty much set to go. And I think that is the plan. So that way he can qualify for his max. Okay. So you think he'll, you think the deal he's going to sign this year will be a next year with a player option. Yeah. He'll play out this year. And then uh, this year with a player option, I should say yeah, he'll, he'll be able to play out this year and then he will have a player option next year. But by him being on the team for two years mm-hmm. and the trade happening, he will be eligible for a max or the super max. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that'll put him in the same category where Giannis right now is already eligible for a super max. Um, Anthony Davis would not be technically right now. Yeah. And yet again, also coming into this of LeBron and AD are buddies, LeBron and AD talk. Um, this was probably something too of, Maybe LeBron might have called AD and said, hey, what's on your mind with the contract? All right, like you're thinking one and one. Hey, I'm going to get this done then. Like I can go ahead and do it because like you said, one of them needs to be able to be up so that this team can say, hey, let's sign this guy. And then, hey, we can basically go over with you because you're already on this team. Um, Last thing I'll kind of ask with this is, does this mean the Lakers are winning? How many more titles are the Lakers winning from now until 2023? You got basically three more seasons with LeBron. I don't see now AD going anywhere because of this. And then if they add like a Kawhi or Paul George, like is this game over? Or is this a, once the Warriors are finally fully healthy, we finally get the matchup we want. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath on that. I am a little concerned if I'm the rest of the league. Okay. I'm more than a little concerned. I think that, uh, at this point, Giannis is, you know, the two-time MVP, and we still don't think that he's got the firepower necessarily to take down LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look around the league, and we, last year, obviously the Heat were uh, underdogs and punching above their weight class, but had they been healthy, that would have been a hell of a series. So I don't think it's a foregone conclusion to say that the uh, Lakers are going to win the next three championships, mm-hmm. but it's hard to not put them as favorites going into this season at least. Knowing what we know, knowing the roster makeup um, that they've potentially improved the roster quite well uh, and covered some gaps. And, you know, I, honestly, they were the best team in the regular season. I think that somehow they could be better this year. So mm-hmm. it comes down to the question of the rest. Obviously the regular season record doesn't matter as much, Yeah. but when, when it's playoff time, everybody's got the experience. Now they're all coming back. It's, it's a scary team. I'll tell you though, there's one team They've got revenge on the mind, Dave, and they also made some good moves, some moves that might be able to go in the defense for LeBron. Don't sleep on them trailblazers. Hopefully they're healthy. They got Roco to play some defense, hopefully on uh, some LeBron. So maybe this year uh, the trailblazers can uh, yeah. actually uh, do some damage. But they are dangerous. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. Like Dame even said the one thing about the bubble of why we saw – so many great games as he had a quote of basically saying um, we were all rested. Like we had the most time off to fucking get rested to where it's like, that's why the games um, were as fire as they were basically. But moving over from one LA team to the other side of LA, Dave, there's some interesting stuff coming out. This is from the athletic of, I've got two tweets here where the first one from the athletic going to their article says, the treatment the Clippers gave Kawhi Leonard and Paul George rubbed some teammates the wrong way. And they have three bullet points. Number one, Kawhi and PG-13 had uh, power over the practice schedule. Number two, Kawhi lived in San Diego, which often made him late. And number three, teammates believed they could choose when to play. Basically, Paul George and Kawhi could basically choose, now nah, I don't want to play this game. Now I'm sitting out this game and have nothing um, said to them or no repercussions for them. And then there's another tweet of uh, 
there was an unnamed Clipper source on the team's lack of chemistry success and uh, well, success last season. This is from uh, at the score. It says, how do you ever build a strong team with that shit going on? I thought from the beginning, we're doomed. Kawhi wants too much special treatment. Dave, what is your thought on this? And are the Clippers in trouble when it comes to chemistry in order to be successful this year? I think I actually read something that uh, Paul George basically was throwing uh, Doc under a bus too Mm -hmm. for the team culture and uh, the lack of responsibility on some stars and, you know, just in general, the the way the team didn't practice enough, they weren't uh, disciplined basically. Like Mm -hmm. a a lot of blame getting tossed at the head coach. And I think the head coach is a tone setter. So like, look, if, if we on the outside were like, wow, Kawhi and Paul George are getting special treatment. And then in the locker room, when, when they're in the same mindset as the general media on the outside, that's never good mm-hmm. because they, they have the insight. They are there. They know the story. We're just gleaming, you know, hey, I, it looks like the, the players don't look like they're happy down there or they, there's a rift or whatever. And like, nah, that's that was the truth. So knowing that and seeing that, I think that the culture is set at the top, and I do blame Doc for this. I think Doc Rivers mm-hmm. played his hand into – you know, wanting to accommodate Paul George and Kawhi Leonard uh, as much as possible and play around the vet heavy, you know, hey, we'll pick and choose when we have to show up and we don't mm-hmm. have to go 100% all the time. Uh, and his lack of um, his lack of mid-game, like, management for, like, hey, adjustment, that was the word, thank you. Um, so with that being said, like, yes, there are a lot of problems on that team. Yeah. They can't all be blamed on Doc, but I think you can put a large scale of blame onto Doc Rivers for his coaching style. And again, it's it's not that the style is bad. It's the style didn't fit with the guys mm-hmm. on the roster. I, so, I'm with you. And the thing that I first thought when I saw this, and I'm taking stuff from Twitch chat too because they're kind of feeding into what I'm going to say, is Mad Rogue says, you know if they won the ship, that stuff is not leaking out to the press. I had the same thing. I was like, you know what? If they would have won and it like basically if they would have been the Lakers, if the Clippers would have won and the Lakers didn't win, we're not hearing anything because, oh, we were successful. Hell, if they even went to the Western Conference Finals and lost in seven to the Lakers and it was a hard fought series, none of this shit comes out. The only reason it's coming out is because the low, like lower players or like the unnamed source, they're just upset that they weren't more successful, that basically this team fell short of expectations. And then like Tim says um, in Twitch chat, it might've kept them from winning the ship. I don't think it did. I don't think it kept them from winning the ship because you know, what kept them from winning the ship, the nuggets out playing them. That's what kept them from winning the ship. The nuggets came into that series. They were the better team. And that's why they ended up winning the Clippers. They had to limp through a series with the Mavericks. Like they probably should have lost that series, Dave, like, we were looking at it going, man, Luca. I know Luca got hurt in one game, but it's like he might be able to pull them to a victory. Now the KP yeah. stuff happens. Luca left a game a little bit. Like, there was stuff that went down for the Mavs, too. But, like, yeah. the Clippers weren't full strength. I agree with you. Like, Doc is the first thing. And yet again, with Ty Lue being the head coach, we will see was Doc the problem. The other side I look at it, I go, all right, are we going to be prima donnas here to where it's like you're telling me that – Giannis, Jimmy, LeBron, name any fucking lead player superstar on a team that they're not getting special treatment, that the rest of the... You're telling me Michael Jordan for the Bulls didn't have to do some things that other players had to do? Now, the thing with Michael that they'd say all the thing in the last... Doc, now, we all know is basically... Le- that basically Michael was like, you know, what, I'm going to hold you to the standard. And if I'm not, if you're not at if it, I'm then you're not it, on my team. Yeah, me. basically. But like, there's a part of me that's like now in this NBA, like Kawhi Leonard, not playing a game, choosing what games not to play. I have no problem with that because we know injuries are a problem for him. As long as he's there when we need him. And that's the problem. Paul George and Kawhi were not there when they needed him. They were not successful in the playoffs. That's the crux of all this. Yeah, I mean, had Paul George not gone full pandemic P, they <laughs> would have been a very competitive team. Had Doc Rivers made any adjustments during that Nuggets series, they would have been a competitive team and had a chance mm-hmm. to win it out. 
So again, it's just it's very frustrating to see a team that had as much talent and depth as they had mm-hmm. not seem to be able to find an answer with all the different lineup options, with all the different tools they had in their bag, mm-hmm. could not figure it out. And that's the frustration. I wouldn't be surprised if this leak was Trez. I'll be honest. He's okay. off the team. What are they going to do? You know, it, it, yeah. it's it's one of the things where I'm like, I'm looking at, at, at guys in that roster who were unhappy, and I can't name anyone unhappier than Montrez Harrell because he left. A and top, he was expected to come back. There's a top three. Trez, Bev, Lou Will. That's my top think, three. It's one of those three. It's mm-hmm. one of those three. Like, I love your Herald take because it makes sense. What are they going to do? Apparently, Everly might have said something publicly to people's <laughs> face, though, in my mind. That, that's that, that's the kind of his, you know. Pep, Pep, Pep I gotta fucking hide, a, hide around a unnamed. You know Ooh. I fucking said it. <laughs> he put his name on something, yeah. I feel. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, it, it's somewhere in that grouping probably, but, uh, it is just, it, it's frustrating that, yeah, you, you, you nailed the spot on though. Every mm-hmm. star will get treatment. Not everybody's going to be treated equally. Everybody will treat, be treated fairly. That's yeah. the expectation, you know? And, and the other thing too, is like, this is very small potatoes. Um, yeah. I mean the whole like living in San Diego thing. The, the only thing I look at that and I go, if I was basically someone from the Clippers organization, it's basically like, yo, bro, I'm fine with you living in San Diego, but like, you know, traffic sucks here. Can can we do the whole like Kobe treatment and like he you know, helicopter in for like, I if he's helicoptering he in, like there should be no problem because he's not uh, done dealing with practice. Like that was the I whole reason why Kobe would do the helicoptering yeah. because he want, he didn't want to be right next to the stadium. He wanted to live where he wanted to live and then come to fucking practice and stuff. But at the same time, it, I get the thing of like, you want everyone to be on the same page, but it's like, I feel like the superstars are going to get the special treatment. It's just, it's yeah. going to happen. Maybe it is an atmosphere thing. Like Tim said, maybe you look at the Raptors and there were guys like Fred and Kyle and Siakam to where it's like, they were younger players to where it's like, it didn't really phase them as much. Kyle's old. We're, okay, Kyle, well, Kyle's the oldest one. You're right. But it's like, maybe it didn't phase them as much because they were just like, maybe it's the, there was already a culture set in with um, Dwayne Casey and then Nick Nurse kind of continuing that and making it his own. Maybe that's why we never saw a problem with Kawhi on the Raptors. Plus, maybe the Raptors knew, hey, we're probably a worse team without this Kawhi guy on it. So, uh whatever keeps him here because we want to win games and it won them a ship. Um, we're basically on the Clippers. You've got like, if Trez is the one that leaked it, he's no longer on the team, but like you got guys like Pat Bev and Lou will, who aren't afraid to speak their mind are older players and kind of seem like players to me that would be like, yo, I don't like this treatment. I'm going to speak up and say something about it. Maybe, maybe I think I had more to do the fact that, uh, there wasn't a leader in yeah. the locker room. And no, when you have a head no coach who's guy? so you a glue guy, when you have a head coach who's so lax, like Doc was, and mm-hmm. the way he treats his players, because a former player himself, he gets it. He doesn't want to be that imposing, rah rah, yell at everybody, you know, whatever shit. Um, but you look at the locker room that he had, that Kawhi has thrived in, San Antonio. He didn't need to be the voice. Yeah, he got to sit back and let Tim Duncan, Manu, and Tony Parker be the guys who are there for the locker room. They have the ownership. They have the responsibility. He just had to show up, play in world-stopping defense mm-hmm. and knock down some big shots, go to the Raptors. That was Kyle's team. Yeah. Like, Kyle Lowry's heart and soul, that Toronto Raptors team. Mm-hmm. And they added in, a you know, one of the smartest vets in the game with Gasol and then Ibaka prior. So, like, mm-hmm. they had a really great culture prior to Kawhi Leonard arriving there, I think. And that's that's the thing is having that locker room guy who sets the tone for everyone else. This Clippers team felt very much like we were just piling on pieces and pieces and pieces. Mm-hmm. And whether they fit or not wasn't really the point. It was just we should have enough talent at this point to just solve this problem. And I felt like that, uh, you know, Lou Will and Pat Bev, yes, they have they have their own personalities. But, like, mm-hmm. as far as locker room leaders, neither one of those guys screams leader to me. Yeah, because I was going to say with the Thunder when PG was there, I know, like, it's Russ's team – it was, yeah. But was Russ the locker room guy? Like, I'm not, like, I would say that to me, like, Russ isn't the, like, 
how do I put this? Not basketball ability, but like to me, it's maybe I'm not in the locker room. Maybe it's just what I see um, when he's on the court. I feel like the Thunder were like, they were a good team. They won some games, but like it was Russ was the locker room guy. But at the same time, it's like, do they need a better locker room guy? Um, maybe that's just me putting the stigmatism would, that I always put on fucking Brody. I would ask you to consider the comments we've heard since the Houston stuff broke mm-hmm. and how he was a locker room leader. He was the guy mm-hmm. who was going around the locker room being like, Hey, not you need yelling to work at on Austin this. Rivers. You need to work on this. You need to work on, this. <laughs> mm-hmm. need to work on it. Like literally going person by person yeah. saying, Hey, we got to get better. We've got to make sure this shit works because we can't afford to lose. Mm-hmm. That to me screams leadership. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Like, Point He's is, a tone setter. Uh, I think yeah. his effort level is a tone setter. Which if Kawhi went, let's say he did go to the Lakers, like we mentioned in the last segment, LeBron's your glute, like LeBron's your leader. Yeah. Like there's no way Can't around it. Or if Kawhi, fuck it. Could you imagine if he went to play with Jimmy in Miami? Like <laughs> let Jimmy be that leader of keeping everyone accountable. Kawhi's just got to come to work. Like, yeah, cause be I feel Jimmy very, would, very I feel like Jimmy would be the guy that's basically like, yo, Kawhi, we in this together. As long as you show up to the game, you be you, we fine. I'll get the troops in order. I'll get the young, I'll get the young guns in order because basically that team is fucking Jimmy, Jimmy might be on the other side of that as well. And just be like, I'm doing it. Your ass is doing it too. He oh, might pull Jordan on him. Yeah. That, which, Hey, might, make, might make Kawhi a better, a better player. Like if he buys in, I feel like, I feel like Kawhi would like if yet again, it all comes back to two of is the team winning is the team successful that adds into things. We talk about numerous times losing teams and kind of falling into a losing culture. It's like when you're losing, it sucks and it brings out the worst in you. Um, But Dave, moving on, we got a little bit of a hometown news that we're looking at Otto Porter kind of ruffling some feathers um, as there were videos kind of leaked on Twitter that showed basically Otto Porter at a party during the pandemic. Uh, and the video showed him walking up to numerous women going, yo, open that mouth and then pouring champagne in it. Uh, you do you play like you, you, I mean, you party that's... however you want. That's not what I'm bitching about here. But like, Dave, this is now the second time, second time that Bulls fan, and this dropped a day before, like, we're getting ready for training camp, Dave. Like, teams are coming in. We're getting ready for the season. This is a contract year for Otto Porter. And for the second time now, Dave, as a Bulls fan, I'm sitting here going, I question your motivations, Otto Porter. I question your commitment to this team. I to mean, basketball. Look, his judgment is questionable. At Leave best out there. that it's a pandemic. Just that, that aside. <laughs> Well, again, we did just hear from the NBA, NBA PA, that mm-hmm. uh, 48 players did test positive for COVID-19 uh, in the last week. Mm-hmm. So could he be one of them? Maybe. I would put could, my money on it. Could he be someone who already had COVID-19 and just didn't publicly disclose it because he's not required to? Mm-hmm. And therefore, he feels like he's immune to the problem and living in some fantasy land. You know, I, again, I'm not trying to make. Or is he a hoaxer? For, we don't know. We don't know. He could be a I, hoaxer. I'm not going to make excuses for him. It's an irresponsible move, one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing things like that. Yeah. But again, not my life. You know, mm-hmm. if he wants to go out there, and obviously he wasn't the only one out there because yeah. it was a party filled with people. So if people make the uh, informed decision they want to go out there and party, that's on them. I don't mm-hmm. think this really. Look, let's be honest here. There are multiple players in this offseason who have had uh, incidents involving the police. They are all on team still. So my money is this is not going to push anyone out any door. Oh, I'm um, not. I'm not saying like he shouldn't be on an NBA team. For no, this. no. Even, those teams already signed their players. Yeah, I'm, that's my point. So I don't think he's going anywhere. I, I don't think this pushes anyone into a trade. Oh, or I think it does. Changes value. Or I, I don't think, think it that, should. If I'm the Bulls, I like the thing that I people who physically abuse their spouses and they're still on their teams on their contract. Yeah. Now, if that's okay, then why is this not saying that's okay though? Like that again. I understand. Like if I was if I was a T Wolves fan, I would be upset that like I would have a different feeling to Malik Beasley being re-signed. Like yet again, like the the reason I'm having the reaction I'm having is this is my team. 
Like this is and Norm Powell as well. Um, Norm Powell as well. Like there, Dave. There are numerous cases. I'm not I'd saying say like I can name a couple more, but yeah, and, points out there. And that's the thing. Like with me, I'm kind of sitting here going like, well, no one. Like at least me, I'm not comparing the two. Like it, they're both shitty situations. If I had one of those players on my team, it's, I wouldn't want them on my team. The thing that it's I kind of judgment. That's what it all comes at the, at the root of its problem. It is questionable judgment. And that's why for me, I feel like, I feel like there's two thoughts coming through my head. Number one, if I'm the bulls, I'm looking to move out of Porter as soon as possible, because like you have AKME coming in and we're trying to set a culture. We're trying to kind of rebrand the bulls and rebuild, like not going to a full rebuild, but basically we got to set the culture here. We're bringing in Billy Donovan to erase everything that Jim Boylan had set up the last, what was he here? Two years. Am I wrong about that? Was he here two years? Was it two fucking long years? I had to deal with him. Um, that that's number one. This doesn't help you in that goal. Number two, like I said, this isn't the first time I've had, like me personally have had a problem with Otto Porter's judgment because there was last year. We talked about it on super fans. I think either you or Sean, one of you guys was on the other side of me. Cause I remember having an argument with you guys about it or one mm-hmm. of you about it of he was out at a club when it was like, Hmm, your foot's too hurt to play yet. You're out there dancing on a floor. Like again, yes. not against going out. Like you can go out and have fun with your friends, but like why on the dance floor doing things that you probably shouldn't when you have an injured foot, which if it then gets re-injured is not going to help you. Like that's the thing. Like, you got to think about your job and what you're I think my basically... argument at that point in time, I was on the other side of that. Yes. A hundred percent. Because in the most basic terms is if you are healthy enough to walk, you are healthy enough to go out there and do whatever you want, but you have to be medically clear to play basketball. Oh, I... he was not medically clear to play basketball, but he also doesn't need to be in a wheelchair. But, and yet again, not rehashing that argument. I just, I was on the side of, Yes, it's you can walk on it, but I, me as a player, I wouldn't want to do anything that could possibly set me back. You know what I'm saying with my injury? Like, okay, I'm not medically cleared, but I don't want to do anything that could set me back, which we've seen stupider shit than dancing on a club floor get people injured to where it's like they miss games for sneezing, they miss games for tripping over groceries or over a rug. Can't live your life in a um, bubble. Like, I get that, but also it's if you're injured trying to come back, that should be your main goal. That's what I'm saying. And this is like, there's poor judgment with Otto Porter that I would say, I agree with Eric, the Bulls need to move him. Here's my problem with it, Dave. Because of this, because of the, if you're a team out there and you're like, hmm, Bulls are looking to move him, he's got poor judgment, does that play a factor into trade negotiations where – not on the side of, I don't want to trade for Otto Porter because I'm sure there's teams out there that are like, fuck, I could use a guy like Otto Porter on the floor. But by Otto Porter doing this and all this drama with it, is this going to, if the Bulls look to trade him, is this going to hurt what they could possibly get back in a deal of like, could teams spin it to where it's like, fuck, you want that? Why would I give you that when I basically have to deal with all this drama and like, is Otto Porter basically hurting a package the Bulls could get for him potentially with poor judgment? Um, yeah, it doesn't help. I don't think any team takes this seriously though, but uh, it doesn't, doesn't help. I mean, what hurts him more is his injury history. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go back a handful of years, let's see last year, uh, he was only healthy for 14 games. The year before that, he only played about 56 games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 56 games. The year before that, uh, 77 out of 8. So, like, his last three years, basically, he has had injuries where he's missed, you know, more than five games a season. And then it's just – it's a question mark. It is a massive question mark with Otto Porter if he can stay on the floor and help you out because that is the best quality about him is, hey, he's a healthy two-way wing. Uh, but if he's not healthy, then what is his value? You know, that's mm-hmm. – it's a huge problem out there. And – He's a limited player on a massive contract, so I don't think his value league-wide is high at all. I think that uh, already people are like, well, why would we trade for somebody who is not worth the contract? And then he's also someone who has questionable judgment. He's also someone with an injury history. Mm -hmm. So if the stats don't line up, 
for the money. Yeah. The health doesn't line up, and the judgment doesn't line up. So why would any team want to pay him $30 million this year? I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just something to where it's like, I have a feeling like there's a part of me as a Bulls fan that's like, oh, you should look to trade him now. But then the other side of my brain goes, I don't know if we're going to be able to move him. Like, I I, I don't know if any team's going to want him because, like, the injury history is there. And plus, if you are a team that's like, yet again, if you're a team that culture is an issue, I don't want to say issue, but, like, could it be something to where I'm trading for something, someone that I'm never going to be able to use because he's not out there? Or is it going to also be, well, some teams go, well, if he makes poor judgment, like I think there might be some teams that look like it might be not the biggest red flag, but it'll be something like, Hey, we got to look into this and kind of discuss this in our front office before we think about it. But you know, I, it wouldn't be a trade segment if I didn't have a trade for you, Dave, um, sure. this is from bleacher report, not from me bleacher report. I don't know why the wizards would do this, but uh, John wall for Otto Porter and Thaddeus young. Do you see that deal getting done, Dave? John Wall being a bowl, Otto Porter and Young going over to uh, the Washington Wizards? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Apparently the Wizards want him back, man. <laughs> Wizards want Otto Porter back, man. So, says who? They just year after year drafted four. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, they just drafted <laughs> two wings in a row. Mm-hmm. They do not want Otto Porter back. Yeah, they, I'm on the side of like, up. why would they even want like... If I'm the Wizards, A, not trading John Wall right now. B, yeah, if no. I was, I'm not looking for Otto Porter. Again, John Wall is someone who, as soon as he starts playing games, he can rehab his value. But right now, his mm-hmm. value doesn't line up with this deal. Otto Porter could be someone who puts up 20 points a night, you know, and gets, you know, like seven rebounds and three assists. Yeah. In which case, he would be very attractive for a lot of teams. If he can start the season off that way as a feature piece of a team, then yeah, there's value around the league. But as it stands mm-hmm. today, I think this does nothing to help his value. And I think this does nothing to force a trade because it just, the value isn't there. You'd, you'd be yeah. giving them up for pennies on the dollar. Mm-hmm. And it would be to one of the trade exception teams. Like we could give them up to OKC and then they would flip him for something like a couple picks in like two months mm-hmm. when he's eligible to be traded again. You know, that's yeah. my concern. Yeah. I mean, I feel... I felt this from the beginning, but maybe more so now. I feel like by the trade deadline, Otto Porter will be moved. I don't think that's he, possible. I don't think he finishes the year um, with the Bulls, and I feel like the Bulls might be saying after this, "Okay, we might not trade him right now, but we're going to be if we we're thinking about trading him, we might be thinking about trading him more." Uh, last NBA thing, Dave, we'll go into very quick one is. Uh, NBA Christmas Day games were announced today. The games are as follows, Dave. We've got the Pelicans and the Heat will be kicking off at that'll be the nooner game. Um, the 230 game will be the Warriors going to Milwaukee to play the Golden State Warriors and the Bucks. The five o'clock game being the Nets and the Celtics. That feels like that's always a Christmas game. Um, it's going to be at Boston. Then Luka Doncic going up against uh, the King LeBron James at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then the nightcap, a rematch of the second round playoff series, Clippers and the Nuggets. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts? What do you think about these uh, playoff matchups? You excited for them? I know it's basketball, so Dave's excited. But uh, how would you rank these Christmas Day games, Dave? Uh, you know, they're, 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 they're okay. The problem is it's like... The one I want to see, mm-hmm. Mavericks Lakers game, obviously, but like yeah. KP won't be healthy for that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, you know, who knows if Anthony Davis, LeBron, like what form of that rotation? I mean, it is Showtime kind of a game, so like maybe they'll both be there. Yeah, but yeah, the the, the KP matchup, I wanted to see KP AD go at it and just see who bangs out, wins it out, because mm-hmm. that's that could be a Western Conference Finals type matchup right there, right off the bat of the season. Um, heat pals, that's that's money. Mm-hmm. That is money in the bag, and I'm so excited that's, to see that's that. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one. Like, young stars, young stars, and young stars. Zion, and Jimmy Butler. You Zion can't ask Williamson for more. on Christmas. Let's go. Yeah. I, what time is that one? Do we <laughs> that is the nooner. Yeah, it's, it's there. On, it's on oh. the graphic. Oh, I'm I'm going to plant my tuchus right in front of the TV. I don't. <laughs> I don't care know. What my you might be. Eating, you, people no. might be eating around that time. I will. Dude. 
I well, will and, ignore my family you for know that what? game. Central time, though, we fucking, that'd be 11 o'clock for us. No one's eating on Christmas Ooh. at 11 o'clock. For uh, us, though... It yeah, I pro- usually do, like, a, the Christmas Eve thing, so yeah. that should be good. So, like, with me, it's Christmas Day, usually. The, the game that's in Jeopardy for me is Nets-Celtics, which, for me, if I had to grade them, like... Pelicans heat. Fuck. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Zion, that entire fucking heat team. I hope that's a great game. Lakers Mavericks. I do like, but like you said, will everyone be there? Net Celtics. Like if both those teams are healthy, KD is not playing that game. What? Kemba won't be there. Yeah. Kem- Kemba won't, but like you've got JT Jalen Brown still out there. Fucking that Celtics team with Katie and Kyrie. I think it's still to mention Peyton Pritchard will be there. Oh, and Peyton Pritchard. Can't forget the Pritch man. Uh, the only one that I'm kind of, the two that I'm kind of like eh about Clippers Nuggets only because like I think that one has, has some shine to it. I get the storyline of last year, but I feel like, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's me just looking at the Nuggets and not thinking like, they're talent wise good enough to be prime time or Christmas, but they're not mm-hmm. a team that is all like, they're not the flash. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't have the glitz and the glamour. Jamal Murray um, hit every shot for like no. four weeks in a row. I know that. Shoot. I'm just saying like a team in general to where it's like, to me, it's like, I don't know. Plus it could oh. be a game where Kawhi goes, fuck it. I'm not playing that game. No, that's I'm fucking play. Christmas day is one of those games where I don't care who you are. You're playing that game. If you're healthy, like, and yeah, that should be a good match, but I do want to see how Serge handles mm-hmm. Dylan going up against KPJ and Jokic. Yeah. That's the that's my question. This is like the like early scouting preview. Is like, do they have an answer? Mm-hmm. Can this team beat the Nuggets? Like the Warriors Bucks one to me. I, is that, that just disappointing? Like I'm gonna say yeah. something that might sound as disrespectful, but yeah. uh, because we already knew Kawhi was in, injured, should yeah. the league have taken the Warriors off of Christmas Day? Should they have just Play taken them off for Christmas Day? Because, like, for me, I look at it and I go, there could, like, Steph could be knocking on whatever I can, Dave, that fucking, that fucking oh, Steph man. doesn't get injured. That was probably very bad, knocking yep. on the microphone. But, like, that Steph doesn't get injured. Clay's already injured. Like, the Warriors not full strength. It's kind of eh to me. So here's the thing. On one side, I totally agree with you. On the uh, other side, it's the fucking Warriors. On the other side. <laughs> We could see like a weird like grouping of Kelly Oubre, uh, Wiggins, N- and Wiseman, like somehow mm. dominate on a level where they can compete with the Bucks. That would excite me. Like it is up to that you know group of guys who we have. I don't want to say written off, but mm-hmm. I mean they're clearly clearly a tier below what our expectations are right now for this team. So yes, we know what Steph is. He's he's the best point guard. You know, one of the best shooters of all time, and everything he's gonna be able to bring back to that offense so it should actually function like an nba level team instead of the g league team it was last year Mm -hmm. uh but again it's like give me like a week of seeing wiseman Ubre, and wiggins together that's what i'm excited about let me see the kids play and we'll see what this matchup looks like because the bucks Giannis is Giannis, drew is drew like came in we we know we know this team nothing really changed there other than the fact that you switched out eric bledsoe who's just a continual playoff choker for mm-hmm. Drew Holiday, who, you know, has some legs to stand on. So, we'll see. The problem with me is, so, like, looking at these teams, yeah. obviously the Lakers and Heat are going to be on Christmas. They were in the finals last year. So, you got to have, the, like, let's say you're like, okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten game or ten teams, teams that we got to have. Lakers and Heat are going to be there. They were in the finals last year. Check, check. Uh, Pelicans have to be there. Zion Williamson, like yes. get him on prime time, get him yeah. not even prime time, get him on Christmas day in front of the fucking yeah. national, um, audiences. So check Agreed. Then it's like, well, you know, the net, the nets are going to be there. Cause Katie, you want to have him on Christmas. The Clippers yeah, are going to be there because of their players. You want to get them on Christmas. Um, Celtics are another one that have to be there. No. I would even say the Bucks, like you got to have Giannis there. I understand the Warriors, but without their names, I wouldn't put them. Like, to me, I almost like the interesting decision that I would be making is. And yet again, this is because of their hot bubble performance. Yep. And because of uh, basically the hype around this team, should the league have put the Phoenix Suns on Christmas Day? 
Maybe instead of Clippers Nuggets, it's Clippers Suns. Or instead of Mavericks Lakers, it's Suns Lakers. Suns Lakers intrigues me just because those fan bases hate each other anyway. Luka Doncic. I know. I get, I know. I know. Luka, Luka Doncic. Doncic. Like maybe what I would do is move Mavericks to Mavs Bucks. Take the Warriors out. Mavs Bucks, then Suns Lakers. No, okay. again, like it's Steph Curry is still the face of I, the Warriors, the dynasty, true. and the greatest you know regular season team of all time. So the, the, every the, team the, here the, has a reason to be here, except they do. the Pelicans. No, the Pelicans they have Zion. Zion. Like you said, yeah. Adam Silver is not an idiot. He are knows you, marketing. Are you like, going to? Are you going to? It's either the Heat or the Nuggets, then, right? It's it's the Nuggets. Okay. And I know I'm going to take five for it, but you're right. No, like, if there's if are. there's an unsexy team here. It's the Nuggets, and there's no problem. Jokic was a top ten player last year. He he absolutely deserves to be there. Jamal yeah. Murray shot a, an insane percentage and became a second star that we had hoped he would be for a mm-hmm. long time. The question is, can he sustain it outside of the bubble and throughout us then this next season, um, and really show that hey, we have the firepower to really compete with the top teams in the West. But yeah, if there's another, t- if there was a team out of these ten to knock out, like. I want to see Kevin Durant play. I'm sorry. I want to see Kevin Durant and Kyrie and that dysfunctional Nets team play on Christmas Day. Or the Celtics have to play. So, yes, do it they? comes down to. The I was going to say, do the Celtics out. have to play? What's up? I was going to say, like, do the Celtics have, do they have to be on Christmas? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I think like, they're, I mean, they, they've been in the Eastern Conference playoffs for a couple mm-hmm. years in a row. They've got Jason Tatum, who is a, a budding top yeah. 10 player in the NBA. Like, He's got everything that you want from like a, a future superstar. Mm-hmm. Great personality. Got the ego to take the ISO plays. Like yeah. he's got he's got the mentality out there. So, he's showtime. Two changes. It alternate realities of like I'm not saying these changes have to happen. Sure. But two that I would make if you're asking me to make changes. Number one, the Suns. How I would do that is Nuggets. You get the boot. Mavericks move down. Play the Clippers. That'd be a home game for the Mavericks then. So it'd be Clippers, Mavericks in Dallas rematch of a playoff series. Suns are going up against the Lakers. Like that's the ser- that's the series. You want Chris see. Paul, Devin Booker yes. eh? against the Lakers against like Chris Paul, LeBron James. That writes itself. Suns hate the Lakers. They hate Ooh. the Lakers. I know you're talking. You're looking at the Jalen Suggs injury, aren't you? No, the retro retro. What Nets Warriors should face each other. Hundred percent. Kevin Durant <laughs> versus Steph Curry. Good I point. love the storyline there. Well, and that's the thing. The Celtics were the other team where I'm like, boot them, get the 76ers in this bitch. Uh, and then basically what I'm doing is how I would move that around. Let's put the Warriors against the Nets. Warriors against KG or KD writes itself. Yep. Then I almost say, fuck it. Have Heat Bucks go up against each other. Uh, no, no, I've never seen that. No, I'm going to say I would I move like the, Pel- the Pelicans to the Bucks, have oh. Zion go up against Giannis, and then Sixers MVP Heat. MVP versus future MVP. Perhaps? And then have Sixers Heat go up against each other, because that's another one that the new the Glenn in? Rivers, the Glenn Rivers team. Like I, The only way I'm bringing the Sixers in, though, is if they're playing the Heat. Like playing Jimmy Butler again, Glenn Rivers coming in. Can they, can they do enough to. Nah, nah. <laughs> Sixers, nah. Sixers don't. Intrig- Sixers like, on let's be honest, the, on, East, uh, the East don't have Christmas like, Day. like the other teams that yet again, not saying they should be, but like the rocket, you could make a case for the rockets. You could make a case for the blazers. The Hell, rockets if you aren't want- there for one reason, Ricky, because no one knows if Jim Hart and yeah. Russell Westbrook will yeah. be playing basketball for Houston mm-hmm. on Christmas day. Like you could even you could even make an argument for the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies are less se- the Grizzlies fall yeah. in the same category as the Nuggets, but they're less sexy than the Nuggets. <laughs> I would argue they're more sexy than the Nuggets, but, but they're less. You good. really like them, <laughs> but they're less good. The Jumpus Grizzlies <laughs> are better team. Jumpus Grizzlies, Let's as far go. as fun, because John Rant has just he, he's you know Derek Rose as far as landing, but mm-hmm. like he's got the explosive, you know explosive throwdowns like he is he, he is absolutely fun but yeah no the nuggets are just a much much better team retro I will grizz goats that. grizz goats, grizz goats. Let's go. son? so uh, but yeah can we, can we just uh apparently there's an ankle um yeah we'll, injury to suggs right now we'll uh we'll move into that so jalen suggs our twitch chat is telling us next josh torn achilles dave this is the raw reaction to it what is your are thoughts sure on this achilles? Uh, is that I'll, I'll fact check it, but let's say I, it I is just see a picture of him grabbing his Achilles. I'm, and you're probably right. I'm going to look it up on Twitter, but Dave raw reaction. 
Jalen Suggs injured. What's your thoughts? What's going through your head right now? Oh, this sucks. This just sucks right now because, again, like I want to watch these young kids become, you know, stars on TV and mm-hmm. being able to see their college games is awesome. But it's it's what like three games into the season for the Zags, like four. four. This is the fourth game. I think they had one yesterday and then today. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just. It's frustrating, and I, I can non, only imagine non-contact too. He was just under the basket. Yikes! Yeah, that is tough. Um, John Ro- John Rothstein said Jalen Suggs has uh, left tonight's game against West Virginia due to an injury. Um, could not walk off the floor on his own terms in obvious pain. Um, so no one is saying torn Achilles officially. <laughs> well, that's frustrating. Again, he was he was one of the top guard prospects out there. Mm-hmm. Um. I think everybody loved his he's got great size, good athleticism, smart ball mover. Like he had a lot of positives for him and he was a good shooter so far. So it's he only yeah, this is their third game. Okay. I I, say, yeah. I thought it was their fourth. Like there's some teams that have already played three depending on Yeah, I know. Like a lot of yeah. yeah. Yeah, I but no. I had a feeling they had played three already, but uh, I was wrong. Yeah, it's it's incredibly frustrating because he was gonna be a top well can't say what top percentage, but he would, probably would have been lottery right now. I think is right. That's fair to say. So can I ask this then? If he was going to sure. be lottery injury, I'm assuming bumps him out of it. Does he come yeah. back next year for sure? Is he one of the guys that we're already going to look at as Jalen Suggs? This is his uh, freshman campaign. Is he in it? Or, is he- he'll, or Kyrie or um, who else was done after a couple of games? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Wiseman only played a couple um didn't kevin durant have an injury or what did he have an injury his his the year like before his i'm last trying to year. remember um wiseman's the best example because that was just last year he just didn't and that, play. but that wasn't an injury though well, that was the yeah, a... suspension or, uh the, yeah Kyrie. no no oh, um no it's it, we have an exact match darius garland yes and he came out, but his was what he played like six games. I mean, yeah, similar amount instead of three, yeah. two and a half. Like that's a, that's the a thing though. Like with Darius Garland though, was he wasn't a freshman, was he? Yeah, he was. Was he? Yes, he was a one and done. Yes, I'm looking. At, I don't. You, I can bet money on that. Okay. I yet again, I don't remember if he was a one and done or. Yeah, no, um, he wouldn't have been drafted that high. <laughs> Everybody just wanted to give him the Dame comps. Yeah, he's a one and done. You're high. right. Um, because yeah, he was averaging so in five games he averaged 16 points a game. Um, he shot 63 or 53 percent from the field, uh, 47 percent from three. Yeah. And Jalen Suggs, Wikipedia obviously doesn't have his stats. Uh, through two games that he finished, he was mm-hmm. shooting uh, 18, or he 18, four, and seven assists a game. Okay. Uh, splits of 62, 40, 66, 0. 0.7. And again, that's basically he only had six free throw attempts. So, like, mm-hmm. don't, he, he was four, six from the line. Don't think of it as terrible. But at the same time, only two of five, two of five from three. So, yeah, not exactly. You know what? I don't you think can't extrapolate he, from small sample size. I don't think he stays because, like, I'm even looking at tape. I think he still goes, yeah. and I think he's still potentially lotto. Like, he's late lotto. Because, like, because, like, right now, yeah. Tankathon has him as. I it, it's Tank. it's the first time I've seen this ever happen, Dave. Of I haven't checked Tankathon yeah. since they switched classes. Yeah, this is a moment for so, me. So Jalen Suggs is two on mock draft and big board. Basically, Whoa. the top three are one, two, three, one, two, three. Like it's Cade Suggs Green on the big board and on the mock wow. draft. I knew he was up there. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Whoa. What? What? Please. Woj just dropped the bomb. What happened? Drop? He used to trade Tra- Russell Westbrook for John Wall in a first round pick. It's done. Holy shit. Did he? Is that Woj official? That's at Woj ESPN. Yep. That's at, at Woj. So, Dave, we're going right into it. Breaking news before Wet Boys. Uh, we talked about Jalen Suggs. Uh, Russell Westbrook, he's in uh, Washington, John Wall, and a first-round pick heading to Houston. What do you want to hit first, my guy? What? At everyone. Yeah, what do you, what do you want to hit uh, first? Like, this holy shit. Out. Holy shit, Set. that that just broke right now. I thought that you were basically going to say, like, the another injury happened, but yeah. Um, 
So the Wizards did it. I guess they did want to trade John Wall after they said we don't want to trade John Wall. Yeah, I mean, that's you got to say face. Look, as a front office person, you're expected to lie to the media. It's mm-hmm. the media's job to try to tell the truth, but it's your job to say face. Um, this is incredible. I mean, that's fucking what now? Like, my brain is just... I'm in, I'm in rehab mode for, like... Mm-hmm. We were just talking about this guy, Jalen yeah. Suggs, who's going to have to overcome a horrible injury and spend the next nine, ten months on yeah. just rehabbing but, to be able to walk and run again. But, but like, we had, we had brought up, yeah. Literally, someone who had to go through mm-hmm. rehab to be able to walk and run. It all works yeah. together, Ricky. We got the rehab story because John Wall hasn't played a basketball game in, like, two years. And then Shams, same tweet, but Shams uh, put in that it's a 2023 per- protected first-round pick. Going, okay. uh, going from the Wizards to the Rockets. Yeah, that makes sense. Because John because Wall coming off of the in- injury. Size. Yep, the injury to John yeah. Wall previously and the contract size of that deal. I Wow. To, to okay. me, basically, it's like a... That, that's what I was going to ask. To me, it's <laughs> the... I love this for Russ. Russ gets to go to a young team that's basically like... It's his team again. Like, what we... Is it? What you had mentioned... I think Is so. They're an alpha. Oh, let's try. I forgot about Bradley Beal. Fuck, I alphas. completely forgot about Bradley Beal. Two alphas. Yeah, but I think like I think what you mentioned earlier in the show speaks volumes that I think that Bradley Beal and Russ can work yeah. together as teammates better than maybe John Wall and Bradley Beal did. For Houston, I'm sitting here going, huh? Like, the, you should have traded the other one. That's what you should have done. You traded the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. <sighs> you should have uh, traded Harden like... Harden and John Wall, it's, it's almost a- like a how many games in does John Wall just want to basically take Harden's head and bash it against the wall? Because I oh, think I that's going to happen. Like, John Wall, I am not excited for what you have to deal with in Houston. I mean, look, John Wall is. Uh, uh, yeah, he's going to be he's going to be frustrated pretty quickly, I think, by James Harden. Mm-hmm. But it does mean that uh, James Harden gets somebody out there who. Fresh start again. You don't got any <laughs> beef. Like Brody and him yeah. have had a relationship for years now. Mm-hmm. And they say they're good and they say everything's tight and they're fine. But you know that like You know Brody holds room. grudges. Yeah. Brody so, Brody like, is holding a grudge against KD. You think he doesn't hold one against Harden for leaving back then? It wasn't his choice. What? It wasn't Harden's choice. Harden got traded with like an hour of time notice to figure out if he what the deal was. Mm-hmm. Sign a shitty contract or get traded. So yeah. um no, I I think it's just they had you know, hey, I got a relationship and sometimes you got to start over. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the best answer is fresh start. And I think John Wall is a great partner. Um, if he has, you know, half the speed he had before, mm-hmm. he's still got NBA level speed. Yeah. Where as a point guard, he will still have a first step that's better than, you know, Nico Mannion. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we all know that guy can't get off the fucking line. Sorry, Ricky. I just got to just gotta jab every time ne- I get a chance. Nico's going to be good and you guys are going to sure. be like, wow, Ricky was right. When Ricky was right. Doesn't happen. Totally. Often. Um, but no, like John Wall, again. His game plan was all because he had elite speed. That was mm-hmm. what he used to play was with his elite speed, his first step, his ability to get around defenders, turn the corner and head downhill. Teams would give him the open three looks because he was such a poor shooter. He's been working on that shot, assumedly for the last couple of years, while he's not been playing basketball mm-hmm. because of his injuries. So you'd have to think that John Wall should come back as a slightly better shooter. Uh, everything that I've seen out of him, all the Twitter, Instagram, you know, workout video leaks, like, he is in good shape. He looks strong. He looks healthy. He looks athletic. And his shot form looked better than it was. Again, these are workout videos, so yeah. you're only going to see the best of the best. They're not going to show them breaking shit. So. Dude, yeah, I saw Take fucking that. Ben Simmons could shoot a three in workout videos. Put him yeah. in a game. He forgets, what's a three? I don't know what that is. Take that with Sorry, a grain of salt. I had to. So point being like, can this work? Yes. I think that John Wall, the difference here is John Wall is going back to a system with a true center. Mm-hmm. which is huge because you remember what John Wall made Marcin Gortat look like an actual top tier center in the NBA. We had him in fantasy, Dave, Martin, Martin Gortat. Martin Gortat. I keep wanting to call him Martin. Uh, yeah. Martin. If he can make him look decent, like think of what they can do with an actual center down there. Soapy's boy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Soapy's boy. Down, I just, I'm sorry, Soaps. Uh, but yeah, like they have a legit big man. So they can run the two man game. They have floor spacing. They have Mm -hmm. in theory, a really good team still. So no, I think that the the Rockets, this move is a side grade 
I think side grade. I don't think it's a downgrade, truly. Because I don't think I'm, we're going to know if it's an upgrade at this point for the. Well, yeah, we don't know, but I'm bet like that's yeah. the way I'm leaning. I'm leaning. I'm leaning this as you know the Chris Paul to Westbrook thing. We all mm-hmm. were like, well, Westbrook's a downgrade because he can't shoot yeah. the ball, and mm-hmm. Westbrook was a downgrade, but at the same time, he can carry a team harder than Chris Paul, mm-hmm. like from a stat line. Well, Chris Paul as a mentor clearly did wonders for that Oklahoma City team, and that was seen as a dead even trade, I think, in most people's minds. The problem was that there were draft picks hoisted over there. Yeah, this and to, see. to me, I kind of I kind of would disagree with what Mad Rogue said. He goes, "This trade doesn't help either team." I'll be honest. I think the Wizards are a playoff team now. Uh, no, I didn't. What Boogie did? Was that I official? Forgot Boogie was on the Rockets. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. No, that's right. He did sign with the Rockets. I, right. I would have called, of course, when we talked about this last time, I remember mentioning you Boogie did. signed with the Rockets. You did. meant that John Wall was getting traded. You did. You did. I remember that now. I, I remember that. Um, but, like, for me, I think the Wizards are a playoff team now. Like, now I have the, – the question I had about the Wizards going into our predictions was, will John Wall be healthy? I have no question about Russell Westbrook getting healthy. Like – yeah, knock on wood, he doesn't get hurt, but like he doesn't have that injury history. Also, well, like, an injury, but yeah, also correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. Let me just do some fact checking. Um, Russell Westbrook paired up with a coach who was his coach for the first what five years of his career, Couple from 08 years. to 2015. Let's see, from 08 because Scotty Brooks was there when Russ came into the league. One, two, three, four, five, six for his first seven years in the league. He, like, that's another thing. Russ coming into this, it's Bradley. Like, I don't think Russ is not going to come in and go, whose team is it? It's Bradley's team. But yeah. Russ comes in and adds that the fact that you brought up earlier. It's like the, all right, it's your team. I'm just going to hold people accountable. I'm just going to add on to what you're doing. He knows what it takes. Then he also has a coach that he knows that yeah. knows him to where that transition is going to be seamless, where John Wall's coming into a volatile, a volatile situation. Yeah, he's got Boogie, who's his friend, but a volatile situation with Harden, a new coach, a new GM in place. Like, Houston is not an ideal place right now. Like, talent-wise, James Harden and John Wall have it. But I don't think this is going to work. I kind of agree with, uh, I can't remember who said it in Twitch, James Harden, like, oh, Milf- uh, Milfens, of... Harden's getting moved now, right? Like, I would still move him if I was the Rockets. I would. I would. I would move him to the Nets, get maybe a um, Karis LeVert on this team to match along with uh, John Wall, a young player. Um, Karis LeVert for 26. Because I don't know if, uh, like, how you would match, what, Sham Wet and John Wall? Because, like, what, you'd maybe Sham Wet would be in that deal, Karis LeVert. Jared Allen, like, but they got Christian yeah. Wood now. So what you pair Wood and Allen up and together was, down below, but like, Boogie, that's the thing. Like yeah. that's your, the, the biggest well, problem here is Boogie. Let's everyone, see if he's on the court. Like, I hate to say that about Boogie, healthy, but yeah, this Houston Rockets team has the ability to be a top four team in the West. And I know that sounds ridiculous, mm-hmm. but again, if everyone's healthy, they could do that. Now I think the expectation is that they won't be because Boogie has been hurt for multiple years in a row. John Wall's been hurt for multiple years now. And the expectation is they're both going to come back worse and obviously a step slower, which both these guys hurts their game quite a bit. So I, I'm with you. I think the Wizards, knowing that Bradley Beal's going to have a point guard who is healthy the whole season, guaranteed, because that's what Russ is. He's a guarantee, I'll say it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that does, again, I, I was already saying they were going to be in that uh, playoff picture, but I'm glad that it reassured you because that means I'm on the same page as far as like, yes, this is a bump for them in the right direction that uh, they don't like, lose any shooting. Cause John wall still sucked at shooting threes anyway. Mm-hmm. So like literally there's, there's almost no downside here uh, for the wizards. They do have, we'll have to do the protection on that pick mm-hmm. for 2023 because that could be a brawny pick. Who knows? That could be the year, but will the wizard or will the, ooh, will, the wizard, will the wizards be that bad though? Who knows? Like it's two years from now. Dude. Yet again, like, two years? maybe I'm just assuming because Bronny comes from the loins of uh, the second greatest basketball player ever to play the game, um, that he's going to be yeah, really we'll good. That's that's my point. Is we'll yeah. have to see if it's a top five, top ten, a lot, or what what Sitch is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think the Wizards get a win here. I think they move a piece yeah. who is not thrilled to be there and didn't May- like the fact that the spotlight was still out from his hands while he was on the on the bench. 
And uh, yeah, yeah. It makes that Eastern Conference playing tournament a lot more better, or a lot better, I should say. A lot more that makes better. it more interesting, at least. Because like more. you got the Hawks and the Wizards that are going to be Hawks and Wizards will probably fight for eight nine, um, and then ten will probably be I the Magic. I almost want to bump them up there. The Magic, who the fuck knows? Because they're injuries, man. Ooh, like but, that's. I think the I'm gonna be a Bulls homer and just put the Bulls there. Bulls, the Bulls could. If they go on a run, they could. Like, I'll be completely honest. But Pat like, Williams looks half as good as he has in his workout videos. We're good. Like, um, no, I, I'm with you. I think Wizards locked themselves into the playoff picture. Yeah. And I think, I think, like I said, the Rockets with a healthy team mm-hmm. are a top contender in the West, and they will get slept on because of that injury situation. So, if John Wall is not as good as he was, or if he's slower, if Boogie relapses uh, mm-hmm. an ankle, a knee, uh, an anything in his lower body, mm-hmm. like that's a big blow. Now the, the nice thing is they have that cushion. They did go get Christian Wood. They do have some pieces there that can help them out. But John wall with a center mm-hmm. is a dangerous John wall. That is. And with Boogie's passing ability to find now, someone like they have three ball handlers who are legitimately excellent. The only, the only reason why me personally, I'm pump. I, I am pumping the brakes on Boogie more than John wall yeah. is I know I've questioned John Wall's injury history. Yeah. I need to see Boogie actually play games before I start talking oh, about yeah. him actually being on the court because I got hyped about him in Golden State, didn't play. Got hyped about he him in LA, State. didn't. He got, he though. He got in injured, though. He got injured, though. But he got injured. Like he was, yeah, but he played in the finals. He wasn't the same Boogie, though. That's the thing. Like He, he actually played pretty fucking well. But it wasn't what we, like, they, it was... Not what yeah, no, thought. it wasn't yeah. Pelicans boogie, or yeah. it wasn't Sacramento boogie, or like the La- the Lakers. I got I got hyped about centers in the NBA. I got hyped about him playing for the Ricky, Lakers. I am breaking my rule in our unit. <laughs> I made it this far in the show. <laughs> we just let me have I'll, this moment. I'll boogie be... is still a top tier center if he's oh, healthy. I'm not saying yeah, if he's healthy, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Oof. I'm pumping the break of. I'm not going to get. Dave, I've fallen into the trap before of getting hyped about Boogie and then he doesn't play. I love or, injured like, players, Ricky. You know me. I know. I That's know you do. That's my I love injured players. <laughs> but, uh, like, looking at the East, Dave, the Bulls take, not very hot takey because you look at it, all eight, I think if we're going to 10 teams, all eight teams from last year are in the top 10 still. Um, add Washington to that, so you got nine. Ah, fuck yeah, it. I think he dropped the magic out because okay. of... Yeah, because the Atlanta's in. I think Atlanta's in. So basically, it's for number ten: Orlando, Charlotte, Chicago. Because the yep. Knicks, the Pistons, and the Cavs—that's one, two, three in the draft potentially. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, we all we all just can't wait to hear. Uh, I'm sorry, one, two, four, one, two, four, because or one, two, five, because the Knicks will be fifth. Just remember the Knicks? No, the Knicks will be a playoff team. Remember? remember? Oh yeah, you going on the Kendrick Perkins bandwagon, Dave? <laughs> Because no, I, like, I, yeah, so I believe Wizards, anything that man says. Do you think, let me ask this question. Mm-hmm. For the Wizards, we, we, yeah. well, we'll get to that side in a sec, but does this mean that Bradley Beal has a chance of finishing out his contract yes. with the Wizards? Or a higher yes. chance, I should say. Yes. Yes, yeah? yes, 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 yes. And the reason being is it was always down to, we <laughs> always thought it was, okay, they'll keep Wall because... The thing we thought with Wall, and I remember having this conversation numerous times with fucking uh, Sean, yeah. is nobody wants that Supermax. Who wants that Supermax? Who wants that contract from John Wall? So we always thought, oh, they'll keep Wall, trade Beal. Why would you trade Bradley Beal? You've got, if Beal and Westbrook work, fucking keep it rolling, bruh. Like, what, keep rolling guess, with it. Outside of the attitude, perhaps, mm-hmm. the, the the two alphas bullshit that we always mockingly ref what's different between these two players for people who don't uh i'm laughing at nicks josh i'm sorry i'm not attacking you nicks josh i just you gotta throw the joke in that the knicks are going to be fifth in the draft order no matter where they end up in julia frandall you guys aren't even prepared (laughs) for the damage they're going to do in the low post the spin moves will be legendary Uh, and Um, and don't forget peanut head peanut has gonna be great this year he's basically jimmy butler from what i remember being told (laughs) If you don't believe that, you're never mind, not going there. Um, I, I love you, Nick's Josh. <laughs> Ricky, yeah. the difference between a John Wall and a, and a mm-hmm. Russell Westbrook, for people on the surface, they might be confused. Yeah. Again, we talked about the egos mm-hmm. and the two alphas shit with John Wall and Bradley Beal, but like when you look at them as players, 
Mm-hmm. Both are aggressive downhill players. They both attack the rim. Yeah. They create contact. They get to the line. And let's be honest, neither one of them is a fantastic shooter from the outside. Mm-hmm. So, like, does this change anything for the Washington offense? Does this open no. anything up? Or is this just fresh face in here, a healthier face? You know, what 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 do, what else does it bring? I think this is a, like what you just said, they're adding a similar player into the system that they now don't have to worry about injury history. They don't have to worry about him not potentially playing. Cause I'm telling you, if I'm the wizards front office, yeah, I'm coming in. I would be coming into this season worried like, Hey, I hope John wall plays good. I hope he stays on the court, but if he's injured again and has to sit multiple like games, you're sitting there going, why am I paying you to be injured? Especially right. with that super max. Like, that's what you got to think of. And I think for the wizards, they got a guy that, like you said, can fit a similar play style. Is he exactly John wall? No, but I think there's the injury history. That's no longer a question. And like you mentioned, maybe the two alpha thing disappears because like you had brought up, I'm going to say earlier in the show again, is the going around everyone. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And I feel like Westbrook can be a guy who keeps Bradley Beal accountable but doesn't have that bash like yeah. him and John Wall had. I'm telling you, the Rockets are the ones I'm worried about because John Wall clashed with Bradley Beal. James Harden is not exactly the easy. That doesn't seem to be the easiest guy to get along with uh, on your team. Um, the, the the thing they still can't get over is James Harden. Like talking prima donnas earlier in the show. What would you rather have? Hey. This guy was late to practice because he's our best player um, and he sits out some games or yo, the best player on our team just yelled at me because he missed the free throw and I was standing next to the bench. Yeah. No, I mean, Which one yeah, would you yeah, rather have? It's a little, it's a little touchy, a little soft, as, as, as we used to say. There you go. I didn't have to ask him. How would you spell that out for him? Yeah, no, I agree. And this is this is the concern. Mm-hmm. I under like when I saw the trade, my initial thought was like, there's always a winner. There's always a loser. Yeah. Or it's one of those weird one-off cases where it's a, it, it's an even trade. Mm-hmm. And I look at it and I think you're right. As far as the wizards are the winners because they, even though Russell Westbrook is on a max contract. Yeah. And that's, that's fine and dandy, but they get this sense of the, the safety of mind basically to not worry about injuries. They go, Hey, mm-hmm. we now feel comfortable going Brody, and Beal, our backcourt, we've got Rui and Denny as our wings. We feel really good about the direction of this team. And, like, that's a team that can grow together because, again, Bradley Beal is still – I think Bradley Beal is younger than Karis LeVert or they're the same age. Like, that's the, mm-hmm. that's the dumb thing about, you know, Karis was such an older player coming out. Um, when you're talking about trading for a young talent, like, <laughs> it's just they have a very promising future still. It was just last year they were, like, talent devoid, and now they got the year to play basically – hopefully accelerates the rest of those role players on that team. And maybe you find somebody who stands out like a Troy Brown jr. Who takes up a mantle for himself and Mm -hmm. becomes a a big time player for him. So like, I'm excited for this wizards team, but you're right on the Rockets half. We've seen this off season has been one, one year in between Beal and Levert. Beal is one year older. Okay. Okay. 27, 26. Close. Uh, Not, not a far different. I mean, months away? I, I didn't look at months. I just oh, looked at the I, number. I, if it's like two months, I'll, then, then... I'll, I'll do it to make you happy, though, Dave. I appreciate it because <laughs> I, I just want to see how close they Bradley are. Beal was born June 28th of 1993. Okay. He's like, damn, he's like a couple days older than my sister. My sister yeah. is nearly the same age as Bradley Beal. Put that into mm-hmm. fucking context. Um, Karis. Lavert, what did I say, June twenty eighth, June twenty eighth, ninety three, August twenty fifth of ninety four. Oh, okay. okay. So there about a year and a half. Yeah, that's that's not as close then. All right, fair enough. Um, but let's get over to the Houston team. Yeah, I think they the lost. Houston. I clear loser to me. Run, run yeah. through, run through why they lost. I just, to me, I feel like like they're a loser right now. I wish I should say if they trade James Harden. Then it could be a deal where, hey, this worked out for both teams. I just, I feel like they traded the wrong person. They should have, if they're going to keep anybody, because, yet again, we don't know what the Rockets are going to do. They trade James Harden, changes my opinion of all this. So throw it out the window if they trade him tomorrow. 
Um, Because the Nets do have an intriguing offer that I would think about. Um, The Sixers also have an intriguing offer. Like, there's teams out there. Can you afford it? I mean, this is going to sound dumb, Mm -hmm. but, like, if you trade James Harden for Ben Simmons, you just have the non-shootiness backcourt in NBA history? Or, (laughs) or... You, just, uh, yeah. you trade like, and yet again, Christian Wood throws this in. You can always bounce him out to the four. What if you trade for Embiid? Yet again, rolling with the injury histories with Wall and Embiid. But what if Embiid's in that deal? I'm talking about are. walls with a like Wall with a center. Maybe that happens. Like that's the thing. Where is John Wall or not John Wall? Is James Harden getting moved? I would have moved Harden before I moved Russ because Russ is the guy. Russ, if you're choosing, giving me the choice of Russ and Harden, who am I building my team around as like a locker room guy? I want Russ in that locker room because think about that team now. But James who, Harden's just a better player. That's a problem. Like I yeah, totally J- understand. James Andrew. Harden can be a better player. He's never going to win a title. So when he's on your team, you're never going to win a title with him. Like there's a there's good players that are good players but never win a ring. Let's put it that way. Same could be said about Russ. I'm not saying Russ for sure gives you a ring, but like. If James Hart, like when James Harden retires, he is going to be this generation's ver- a better version of Charles Barkley. Uh, I agree. Where he never gets a ring, that. like that's the thing. Where it's like, how did he not get a ring? But everyone else in his fucking like superstardom got a ring around that time. Yeah, I mean, this is just another point in the string of questionable decisions since this front office mm-hmm. has been blown up. Yeah. Robert Covington, our boy Boko, out there got shipped out of town Boko. so they could get themselves lined up with a center in Christian Wood. Mm-hmm. That just, I don't, I mean, maybe they're incredibly high in Christian Wood and they hate wings who have, <laughs> you know, two way capability and are the most valuable position on every other team in the NBA. But they're like, Man, we really like these big motherfuckers down in the paint, and that's that's our game plan going forward. Like, I, Say I it again, trying, Dave. What are they? What are they, Dave? Big what? <laughs> big, motherfuckers. big motherfuckers down there in the paint. I am trying to rationalize <laughs> what this Houston game plan is because let's be honest, it's been multiple moves, mm-hmm. and I don't know that we're done with them yet. And that's that's to yeah. your point of the whole like, man, my nose really itchy. Um, I don't know if we're done with them yet because you're saying you know James Harden still you know likely a trade target and i'm going i don't know like he's got he's got a restaurant down in houston he mm-hmm. feels like the houston like he as much as everyone thinks he should be traded around the league i think that houston still thinks he's i mean he's the best player yeah you don't give up on him for nothing and they're in a contract situation where it's like hey if we got to deal with john wall for for another two years mm-hmm. why not keep james harden with him like what, I mean, I what's the, the downside of that that's my question is what's the value you're going to get back because i don't think that Ben Simmons plus question mark is better mm. than John or is better than James Harden for my team long term. I mean, I, I, I know it's not Karis Levert and like mm-hmm. Spencer, um, uh, Jared Allen or some shit like that. So mm. like, I just I don't think there's a perfect package for him. If if that package came by, sure. Mm-hmm. Like, well, and we don't know by the trade deadline or let's say after this year, maybe the packages yeah. change because teams become more desperate. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Bulls him. are like, hey, take Otto Porter, Zach Levine, and Kobe White, and we'll take James Harden, and you can have a first-round pick. I like, would have rather had fucking Brody on this team. If you're <laughs> like, I, I, saying, I was like, shooting down the Brody trade rumors, too, when people are like... For a package of youth. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're going for, like, hey, we'll take guys who are already in our primes. Who know? Like, you don't know if they're going the, young prime or, like... We're just trying to dump contracts to just rebuild completely because... And, like, that's the, message, the, that's the, the two sides of this. Make, that's the two sides of this. The Rockets were like, well, where do they go from this? Yeah. Like what, like we're confused of like what the final plan is where it's like the wizards. I know their plan. They're they can there. make, they can make the playoffs this year. And hell, I was even thinking in my head, you were bringing up the young talent they have. Yeah. Like the, I think the plan right now is hopefully that develops and then plays well behind them, but they could theoretically, if they look at this team after this year and go, all right, Bradley Beal and John Wall are good. Let's get one more big guy in here. Let's get our own big, like, or not John Wall. Westbrook and uh, Beal are already here. Let's get our own big three. They have assets in these young players that they could potentially trade for somebody. I'm not saying Giannis, not throwing that name out there. Um, but, like, 
if they wanted to target someone to make a big three, they could potentially do that if they want. Like, and but yet again, it depends on what we see this year from Russ and Beal, and what we see from Rui and Denny and Troy Brown Jr. Like, I they're literally like a five away from being mm-hmm. in really great shape. And I like Thomas yeah. Bryant, but he's he's just a good offensive center. Like, he's not mm-hmm. a a two way stood. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. That's why. I just, I, that's why I kept mocking like a on Yaka. To them. Yeah. Like an Enyeka or an Okoro because of defense. Yeah. But hey, they got Denny. Fucking, I like Denny. I, I, I like his yeah, defense. I got with you there. That's, that, that should work out long term. Mm-hmm. Mo Wagner, again, he, same vein as Mo. Thomas Bryant. He gets a little more uh, in people's faces, a little Mo feistier, Wagner. maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I. The again, composer, as I call him, because it's Wagner. The Wizards, good shape going forward. I think mm-hmm. that the, the draft pick uh, restrictions uh, will be the big telling point yeah. of like. Are they going to be winners or losers? Because if that's the year for the double draft, then they mm-hmm. have fucked themselves. You mean like uh, the, because... the one and done being up? Correct. If the yeah. one and done is canceled, you get the high school seniors and you get the one the last year of the one and doneers, mm-hmm. basically. So you're in a position where the depth of that draft should be greater. So even if you are pick you know, 20, you could be getting a guy who the next year could have been easily lotto talent. So mm-hmm. like that's that's the only consideration I will give to this Washington – Washington Wizards steal. Now, we could see the ultimate karma just bite us in the ass after all this, and Russ mm-hmm. just goes down early because yeah, but whatever, like free, free accident happens, he gets Gordon Haywarded or some shit out there, and I would feel horrible. But yet but, again, uh, I'm gonna throw this out here. You say like, oh, they they might get fucked if that's the deal. The reason why I'm saying they might not get fucked, and this is me putting myself in the shoes of the front office. Hey, if we think Russ and Bradley Beal can be as good as we think. We're going to like our picks not going to be that good. It's going to be like in the between 20 to 30. It's going to be outside the lottery. And hell, if there's really a player we want there, we can go buy a pick. And like we we saw how many trades there were after 20. Like yeah. if it's going to like to me, adding a double draft would mean it's fucking loaded draft. If there's really someone you want later on, they could fucking buy a pick or something or trade like a a player that they have in a second or something to try to get a pick. Like there's ways for them to get back into the first round. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see though. Uh, for the Rockets, mm-hmm. I, I'm with you though. I don't know who's next. Uh, PJ Tucker is someone who supremely valued around the league. And I think that he's, if they, if they're willing to part ways with Boko, then mm-hmm. uh, PJ should not be too far behind. But again, it's like, if they get rid of him, what are they, what are they doing? <laughs> what is the point of this team? Because you've got two stars I mean, but stars. All right, we got, we've got the protection. Sham has it. So, protect sources. Protection on the first round pick that the Wizards trade to Houston um, is so in twenty twenty three. It's a lottery protected pick. In twenty twenty four, it's a top twelve, twenty five top ten, twenty six top eight, okay. and then after that, it becomes two first or two second rounders. Okay, so they're going with the idea of if we're if this doesn't work before 2023, mm-hmm. we tank the shit out of this and they will end up with two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. That's 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 some strict restrictions on there. I'll be honest. With so you. what it gives it gives the Wizards what the end of this year will be the 2021 gives them. Yeah, yeah. two. Th- I would say two years to see if yeah. it works. And then after that fucking. um yeah. They decide if they want to tank in 2023. Uh, but Dave, we got to end the show. And we got two more things to talk about before we do. We haven't gotten the wet boys yet. I mean, you can do wet boys. Sure. We, we got to do wet boys. We got three of them. Why not? Uh, these are the uh, Dave's like, I don't know, man. This this I'm news. Like, just... I, I'm just starting this roster <laughs> for the Rockets trying to figure out. Like, okay, so like, CJ Tucker's contract is mm-hmm. this. And do you want to oh, be yeah. Steven Silas right now? Do you envy his position as the head coach of the Rockets? Man, you still have, have James Harden, John Wall, <laughs> Christian Wood, PJ Tucker, Demarcus Cousins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not yeah. you're not working with nothing. Not working it, with nothing, but like I could, could head coach the student Cavaliers who uh Ricky, I want to fact check you just yeah. to see because we, we mm-hmm. had a whole comment section get mad at you because you didn't know the Cavs had coach had changed midseason. <laughs> yeah, well I didn't. It's Steven Silas. I know he fucking I know that hiring happened because it was the only hiring we didn't talk about. We talked about every other coach getting hired, Dave. We didn't talk about Steven Silas. It, it just it got mixed in with all the other stuff that was going on. 
um, because they fired fucking uh, Mike Dane and Tony. My guy, Mike Dane and Tony. Uh, But let's move on into Wet Boys before we end the show. Uh, Dampest of dudes, saggiest of shooters, the moistest of men, and sometimes the mistiest of misses. These are our players of the previous day. Uh, usually how it goes is Dave gives a wet boy. I give a wet boy. The patrons at patreon.com backslash MVP vids also get to vote on a wet boy, a consensus wet boy for the patrons. Um, and this is just us giving love to players that we want to give love to Dave. I will say forgot to preload them um, before games live. So you might say who your is and then I'll have to change the graphic, but if it happens, it happens. We just fucking go with how the sausages are made. But Dave, I will sure. kick it off to you. Who's your wet boy this beautiful December 2nd evening? Uh, I'm going to go with my boy Jalen Wilson, who was massive. The second half of the game, I think he literally scored all his points in the second half of this game or everything but one bucket, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just... Okay, it wasn't the best game I've ever seen out of Kansas, but it was was a showcase game. And again, it was the, you know, veteran Kansas versus Kentucky Mm -hmm. classic. But like the game itself was not 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 quite classic. Point being, Jalen Wilson, great second half of that game. Huge love for him. Um, and again, this is a guy who basically didn't get to play his entire freshman year. Um, I think he only hit, was out there for like a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for him. I think that this was a big pop off game when they couldn't get offense going. They went to him and he delivered in spades. So mm-hmm. shout out. We'll see what he does the rest of this year. I, I don't think he's. Anybody's, you know, let me check Tankathon real quick to before I say something. Uh, Will <laughs> did, I, did I say Will anything Stin. stupid today? Okay. He's not projected as a first round pick right now, but he can work his way into relevancy, I think, okay. if he keeps up his efforts. So, for my wet boy, Dave, yeah. I am following in the footsteps of MVP great I Sean am. Anderson. This is a wet boy that I am. Sean has done this wet boy before, but we've has never he? given a name to it. I am giving it a name. It is the wet boy that I am giving falls into the, like we have the golden wet boy. We've got David yeah. Stern. We've got Adam silver. We've got Kobe Bryant rip, uh, live on forever. Mamba, um, as our David golden. Stern. What? Yeah. I said David Stern first. Yeah. You didn't say ripped him. Oh yeah. Also, I forgot about that rip. Sorry. 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 Sterny. Uh, ripped to both Mamba and David Stern. Not yeah. ripped to Adam Silver because you're still alive. Please um, don't leave us. But if 2020 takes Dave. I, I hope not. Uh, then we're left with Roger Goodell, Dave. <laughs> but basically, we got the Golden Wet Boys. We got the normal Wet Boys, too. We got the Dry Dudes. We got the Dry Dudes. I'm adding a new category the Legacy Wet Boy. These are for guys who it's more of a like when a guy retires. And it's like, you know what? You had a great career. I want to give you one last wet boy on the way out. Like how uh, Sean did one for a certain Nick Collison. Well, today I am giving a legacy wet boy to a certain, not a Kendall Holmes. That is from yesterday. Um, But I am giving it to a Joakim Noah. News is that he got waived by the Clippers. And his agent says that Joakim is obviously headed for retirement. So today I was like, you know what? I'm going to follow the Sean Anderson. I'm going to give a legacy wet boy, two-time all-star defensive player of the year, fucking three time, what three time all defensive teams, what two firsts and a second. I think he has first team all NBA, even the college ranks. Cause the pro are uh, the basketball hall of fame encompasses all of it. Fucking two time champion in college, a most outstanding player. Like this is a guy that if he does retire, like, I know he played for the Knicks and the Clippers. Sorry, Bulls is where he made his name. That's why I put Bulls. But he deserved one less wet boy. I know yeah, he's already got, like, one or two with the, the Grizzlies. Grizzlies. And that's the Grizzlies. where, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he got his wet boys. Forgot about that. But, like, Joakim Noah, if he does retire, which it looks like that's where he's heading, I was like, he deserves one more on the way out. Is he a Hall of Famer? <sighs> because his collegiate record is what it is. Professionally on its own, no. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Are the hall is the Hall of Fame connected? Is it the Naismith? Yeah, it's the Naismith Hall of Fame. Ooh, I fringe. Let us know in the comment section below. I would say fringe, like, and that's a Bulls fan saying that. Like, I want to say yes. I want to say yes because he was a. Uh, oh, also one thing I left off that uh, 
fucking the Bulls Twitter said uh, was he also had one of the best sound bites in NBA history. Um, after that game against the Celtics, where he fucking roared into the microphone for the entire stadium to hear. Uh, but yeah, fucking. That was a Cleveland comment, but yeah, that was. Oh yeah, too. and the Cleveland. Who wants to fucking go to Cleveland? There's nothing to do here. Uh, when he was trash talking LeBron, and then Dave, the coolest pick. name in all of uh, college basketball. What were you gonna say? Who the fans pick? The coolest name in college basketball, not DK Metcalf, but uh, a Michigan State player. Rocket Watts, Dave. Coolest name. Like, this is my new favorite name in college basketball. Rocket Watts. 20 points against the Duke Blue Devils in a game that the Michigan State Spartans won. Uh, Could have also gave it to, I think it's his last name's Hauser. Or, or, yeah, it's Hauser or Hauser um, with them as well. Henry also had a good game for them. But uh, Rocket Watts getting the nod. No argument. And Dave just let well, the Kentucky one will bump to tomorrow because uh, yeah. long show. But I did want to get this one in Michigan State beats Duke. And I wanted to get it in because uh, I know how much you hate whenever I say this about anything. Um, the question is, Dave, does Michigan State's win against Duke deserve an asterisk? I mean, what does it? What does it deserve an asterisk? Because the comment that uh, Tom Izzo made was, I know one thing, I'm not going to put an asterisk. Um, It was a good win for us against a good team, a great program, and a very, very well-coached team. People are saying, though, this game deserves an asterisk because the main point about the Cameron Indoor, where Duke plays, is that student section is very loud. That student section is right on you. That student section is very big, and they were not there yesterday. If the season gets an asterisk, <laughs> then the game is an asterisk. Well, that's I'll just what I'm say saying. That. Dave's the anti-asterisk, so I, I had to ask. What, what What's the anti-asterisk guy it, it, thinking? I mean, is the NFL season getting an asterisk this year? Is the NBA season getting an asterisk I'm this a, year? I'm asking you your thought. I'm just I'm just asking more questions. I will please answer this one. Because <laughs> I know whenever I was like, ah, the NBA season deserves an asterisk, Dave would be like, no, nah, fuck you, man. Doesn't deserve an asterisk at all. Doesn't matter. Um, just playing basketball. It's pure. Yeah. The the one thing I will say is I don't think so. No. I I fall in the category of yes only because like it, only because of one category, but it's the whole season deserves it. Of the fact that the thing about college is you could say home court doesn't matter in the NBA. Fine. I'll let you, like, you can argue that. World. In college, it's different. Like, there are student sections for a reason. We experienced firsthand the Iowa State Cyclone Nation coming into a neutral site, Dave, and rocking that thing to where we Dave. felt the UC rock. It, I would ask you, which <laughs> do you feel more? The earthquake while we were in Vegas for Summer League or the Iowa UC? State. The Iowa State Cyclones. That's what I felt more. That's what I'm saying. The the fucking earthquake wasn't even... I was sitting back like this, arm over the chair. Imagine Ricky sitting there, like, lean back. And then I'm just like... We didn't even feel it. Like, at first I'm like, oh, I feel feel like we're moving, but it doesn't feel like much. And then Dave just goes, it just mirrors the scoreboard shaking. (laughs) Because the big scoreboard was just... Swaying. (laughs) Swaying. It was so creepy. Um... Yeah, I would say the Iowa the Iowa Cyclones, the actual cyclone they let off in the UC um, wild. Was, wild. was more because that's what I was saying. Like college basketball this year is going to be unique because every game is a neutral site game, even if you're at home because there's no fans yep. there. Uh, but Dave, that's going to do it for us. Didn't expect breaking news on the podcast, but that's when, uh, that's when the shit gets good. When shit breaks that you didn't expect it to happen, you get that raw reaction. Uh, obviously, let us know what you guys think down below. Join the best community not only on planet Earth, the best the best community at the International Space Station, best one on Mars, best one in the universe. Aliens, come at me. I'd love to talk to you, too. want to see what's going on with you. But uh, join the Discord. Link down below in the description or exclamation Discord. Get you into that in Twitch chat. Patreon.com backslash MVP vids if you want to support us again. Link down below or exclamation Patreon into Twitch chat. Thank you to our Patreon sponsors, by the way, Pat Hill and Philly Sean. We're on Twitch every Monday through Friday. If you don't know, twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. We are also on YouTube at MVP Sports. Dave, we are about an hour and a half away from the biggest game uh, so far for my Illini in uh, their season. So I am going to be one nervous wreck in about an hour and a half. So are we going to watch say, along in Discord? 
We could even do that. I mean, I like I will be like I Jake. Say, I know how you get. I don't. <laughs> I, I will. I will you. be like Jake. I I'm fine with it. I'm gonna be watching the game. Uh, hopefully, Io. We got we got that where I fuck up Io's name all the time. It's an A, so I say Ao. Uh, yeah. Where commenter said it's Io Desumu. Yeah, it is Io yeah. Desumu. But uh, yeah, gonna be a great game. Uh, go Illini, ILL. Hope we get the win over uh, Waco and the Baylor Bears. But thank you guys for doing everything that you do. Dave and I will be back tomorrow for more sports talk. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Yeah.